What's up my friend? Abby here and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays. Today we are in a different location. What do you know? We are sitting at my desk because today we are going to be editing, <laughs> editing, is that like really hard to say or is it just me? So a few weeks ago I posted uh, this video which is about like sort of the introduction to editing and, and what I do to edit a first draft of a novel. But I couldn't fit like all the editing things into that one 10 minute video or however long it is. I don't even think it's 10 minutes long. I realized that I had to like do something way better than that. I'm going to show you side-by-side -side comparisons of a page from my debut novel, 100 Days of Sunlight, the before and after. So the first draft, a page from the first draft, unedited, ugh, and a page from the final draft, which is in this book. Ready? Let's go. So before we get into this whole editing thing, before I dive into it on my computer, I want to tell you kind of a little bit more about my personal editing process and what it looks like for me. So for the sake of my eyes, I prefer not to edit all the time on my computer. Obviously it eventually has to all go into the digital manuscript on the computer, but I prefer to print off my manuscripts and bind them in giant white three ring binders so that I can scribble all over them and write on them with highlighters and pens and all other kinds of fun writing gear. What this process looks like for me is I finish a book, I distance myself from it, you've heard me talk about that before, I give myself pretty much three to six months. Six months is like the long end of the spectrum, but sometimes it literally is six months before I pick up that book again and read it. And I can go back into it with a fresh mind. So the first time I go through it, I'll probably read it on the computer just to catch any big developmental things. And then I will print it all off, put it into a three ring binder and read it and mark it up more intensely than I have ever before. <laughs> I also like to create sort of a code key thing with my highlighters. So I'll highlight passive voice or shallow point of view or weak words or weak sentences or continuity errors. All of these things, I like to have a specific color code for them so that when I'm leafing through my manuscript that's marked up, I can easily see from a glance how much of each topic of each issue I'm going to have to address in the manuscript. So after that's done, I will take my written in manuscript and take my computer and sit down and put all the edits into my computer. So that's usually how I do this process. So let's move on to my example that I told you earlier that I would show you a snippet of 100 Days of Sunlight, my debut novel, which is coming out August 7th. And I know I feel like kind of, I'm kind of like freaking out that I'm gonna give you like a sneak peek, but it's just one page from the first chapter. And a lot of you have already read the book because a lot of you signed up to be ARC readers. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for being a part of the launch. By the way, just sneaking that little bit of gratitude in there. You're awesome. So let's get up that file. So let's open both of these and we're going to compare them side by side. And I'm going to kind of show you what went into editing this from the first draft to the final draft that made it to the actual book. Now, I do want to add that um, this is post my editor. So I sent this, I sent my books to a professional editor after I'm done editing them like three or four times. I'll edit the first time, like I said, developmental, just catching the big things. Then I print it off. I get super detailed, put all that in there, print it off again, have my mom read it, who is an amazing editor, like bonus. She's incredible at everything, but she's also an incredible editor and is super honest with me. It's so great to have a person like that in your life. So definitely look for one. You might have one. You just don't know it. So after she gives me her feedback and edits, I put all that into the book. I might read it again one more time and then I'll send it off to my editor who is a professional editor and she will copy it the whole thing and give me feedback as well. So this 100 Days of Sunlight went through all those processes. Plus I read it like probably, oh, I don't know, like seven or eight or nine or 10 times. <laughs> so people are like, how can, you, how can you remember every single line of your book? 
<laughs> so let's compare the first draft, a page from the first draft with a page from the final draft. It's the same page, obviously. What a strange feeling that was to awaken in the hospital and not see a thing, just hear. Beeps and clicks and footsteps and voices. I thought I was dreaming. I must have been dreaming. But then I heard grandma. I felt her holding my hand. I knew I wasn't dreaming and I started to cry. So this is when Tessa is remembering waking up in the hospital after the accident that rendered her blind. <clears throat> so let's look at that same sentence after it went through, <laughs> went through the wood chipper of editing. What a strange feeling that was to awaken in the hospital and not see a thing, just hear. Beeps and clicks and footsteps and voices. I thought I was dreaming, but then I heard grandma. I felt her holding my hand. I realized I wasn't dreaming and I started to cry. So it's not much different. The only thing that was taken out, I think, was I must have been dreaming because that's confusing as heck. They said it was blunt head trauma, severe enough to cause a cerebral contusion, whatever that meant. There was a bruise on my brain and it was swelling enough to malfunction my visual cortex, enough to cause blindness, post-traumatic transient cortical blindness. They said both sides of the brain were damaged because of the way I hit the door. They said I would likely regain my sight, but they didn't say when, they didn't know when. So that's like very messy. <laughs> it's very messy. Ugh. Okay. It could have been worse. Mm. Much better way to start that paragraph. The only injury I suffered was something the doctors called a cerebral contusion, which meant there was a bruise on my brain and it was swollen enough to affect my visual cortex, swollen enough to cause blindness, post-traumatic transient cortical blindness. They said both sides of my brain were damaged and that with time, I would most likely regain my sight, but they didn't say for sure and they didn't say when. That is so much more concise. And I also took out the part that said, um, both sides of my brain were damaged because of the way I hit the door. Like that is confusing because people will now be like, how did she hit the door? And you don't want people to like be backtracking and thinking about little details like that that do not matter. So positioning things like that, ugh, just, just, just don't get into it. They said the other driver was drunk and now arrested as if the damage hadn't been done. He was unharmed, saved by plenty of airbags. They said our car was recalled for defects with the airbag system and it was technically our fault for not getting it looked into, but we had never been notified by the manufacturer, so how are we supposed to know? Oh my God, what a bunch of irrelevant information. And not to mention, like, I don't think anybody would ever be like that. Like, it's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault you got hurt in your car accident because you were hit by a drunk driver. But let's not talk about that part. Let's talk about how your airbags mal malfunctioned and you should have gotten it checked out. Like, not only is that unrealistic, but it's a bunch of information that we do not need to know. So <laughs> that was changed by me to one sentence. The driver of the pickup truck was unharmed. They arrested him, but the damage was done. I already mentioned earlier in this chapter that he was drunk. Grandma wasn't hurt except for a few minor bruises. She stayed with me in the hospital for as long as they kept me, always by my side, always apologizing to me. I'm so sorry, Tessa, I'm so sorry. But I felt like I was the one to blame. I was everything. I was the reason we went out. I was bad timing. I was fate. I was the drunk driver. It was all me. It was all my fault. So like, <laughs> that's very abstract. <laughs> I kind of know what I was thinking when I was writing that, but it's confusing as heck. So that got fixed into grandma wasn't hurt except for a few minor bruises. She stayed with me in the hospital, always by my side, always apologizing to me. I'm so sorry, Tessa. I'm so sorry but I felt like I was the one to blame. I was the reason we went out. I could have said another day, grandma. I could have done something differently, something that could have prevented it all. That makes more sense. Instead of her being fate and bad timing, like I, I appreciate the abstractism, but I don't. <laughs> one week later, a neurologist examined me. Her name was Dr. Carl, and I imagined she had blonde hair and blue eyes and a narrow face. She said the same thing that all the other doctors had said, blunt trauma to the head, cerebral contusion, and cortical blindness. But she said something different, 12 to 14 weeks. Really? I could hear the hope in grandma's voice. I'm realistically optimistic, said Dr. Car Dr. Carl replied. There's no such thing. So that got cleaned up as well into, after I came home from the hospital, we went to see another neurologist. Her name was Dr. Carl, and I imagine she had blonde hair and blue eyes and a narrow face. She said the same thing that all the other doctors had said, blunt trauma to the head, cerebral contusion, and cortical blindness. Then she said, 
I don't believe this condition is permanent. I expect we'll see improvement within 12 to 14 weeks. Really? Grandma said, hope shining through her voice. I'm realistically optimistic, Dr. Carl. Dr. Carl replied, there's no such thing. Much better, much more realistic sounding, much more doctor sounding. <laughs> 14 weeks is 98 days. I asked Siri when I got home that afternoon, and then I started counting down in my head. Today is the 21st day. I don't think that changed much, except I said that was when, instead of then I started counting down in my head. 14 weeks is 98 days. I asked Siri when I got home that afternoon. That was when I started counting down in my head. Today is the 21st day. So that's kind of the basic process that I go through start to finish from the moment I finish the manuscript to the moment that I send it off to my editor. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching a little bit of my process, kind of looking over my shoulder and seeing how I edit my work, whether it's the messy first draft or a second draft or a third draft or the 10th time I've read this manuscript. The thing about editing is that you kind of have to decide to quit after a while because a work of art is never finished. It is merely abandoned. I have no idea who said that, but I heard it somewhere and I'm like, that's true. So you really, you could edit forever and you kind of have to decide when you're gonna be like, that's good. That is good, I'm happy with that. So. I hope that this video has inspired you a little bit and maybe got you in the editing mood. Some of you love editing and some of you hate it. So comment below and tell me, do you love editing? Do you hate it? Does your process look anything like mine? Do you like to print off your manuscripts and actually hold them in your hands and write all over them and scribble and use highlighters? Do you have a color-coded highlighter key? If you do, I want to give you a waffle for being so awesome. Smash that like button if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Also, be sure to hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button if you want to be the first one to know when I drop a new video. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh.